In this episode, an exclusive interview with the force behind Brock the Investigator, last month's furry charities, and what makes the fursuit really stand out, and the result of the Pride Shirt giveaway and how to get one of yourself, and many more. But first, the latest charity news from this fandom in the July edition of Digging Up Positivity. As we speak, the people behind Papa Barks are hard at work to raise money for ALS, and I'm happy to be a part of it. While my counter is still at $110, and I hope to raise that amount in the upcoming two weeks, adding to the already enormous amount raised, as we are recording this video, the total stands on $22,532.41. Please do join me on Monday the 29th of July or the 5th of August or one of the many awesome streamers helping Papa Barks raising as much as possible for ALS until August the 11th. Well, the furries helped out their own furry four-legged friends as Anthrocon broke a fundraising record over the weekend. The nonprofit organization chooses a local charity every year in our area with the aim to give back through the convention. A highlight for many, one of the longest running conventions in the furry fandom, Anthrocon had 17,639 attendees raising over $1,000 for Grey Paw Sanctuary, an organization devoted to provide a loving home for senior dogs from local shelters, humane officers, animal controls and other rescues. One of the more well-known forces for LGBTQ rights is Sherbert, who is tirelessly fighting to raise money for various pride-related charities, dispute a very tumultuous life. Truly an inspiration for us all, with Sherbert Transnanigans Part 2, they have raised $2,500 for Point of Pride. From sunny Brazil, we have Brazil Furfest, where 1,121 wonderful attendees once again place this amazing convention on the map by raising 5,520 US dollars for SOS Vida Pet Litoral, an organization that started out from a group of friends with their mutual passion for helping needy animals, trying to be there for all those animals that need the help the most. What started out as a day at a local cafe grew into a multi-day convention. Euphoria, a whopping 430 critters, came together and raised 1,742 US dollars for Capital New York chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And in Utah, we had Entro Weekend Utah. Oh wait, their anagram is Awu. <laughs> Clever. They had 2,438 lovely attendees, raising 35,577 US dollars and five cents for Nuzzles and Company, a no-kill shelter which have found homes for over 25,000 pets so far. Coda Bear the Explorer joined the 2024 edition of Chalk Walk, presented by the Disneyland Resort in California, and managed to raise 5,305 US dollars. Chalk is an organization dedicated to patriotic healthcare, providing customized healthcare for infants to young adults. Each and every month, the amount raised is getting more and more surreal. As of this episode, all charities covered have raised over 930,000 US dollars worldwide, from which almost 25% went to LGBTQ related charities, a little bit over 21% went to human aid, and a little over 53% went to animal related charities which after all these years is still a fandom favorite. The French PlayStation Twitter account is known to post out of the box promotions, but I am not one to go along with most attempt of brand posts. But this one 
deserves an exception. They took a Spyro figurine and a drone. And some After Effects later, I can truly see that we're flying with Spyro. Last month we had Indonesia Weekend Antro Gathering. Or in short, IWAG. Hey, another fun acronym. And where Western furicons tend to go 3D or virtual with opening videos, the Asian conventions pull their animation game to a whole new level. Just check out these wonderful good vibes. The amount of fursuits worldwide is truly exploding and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to stand out. Well, this glass kangaroo sure did, owned by Aoi Kitsune. This lovely hopper shines bright like a diamond and steals the spotlight wherever they go. Speaking of standing out, Yan Wu posted this excellent video with a flame sword. I absolutely adore the effects. I have been on the internet for a long, long, long time. And we will stop, never fail, not to make me laugh. Recently, they uploaded a new track, Capybara. While we love that little friend and all, mixed with ska and drum and bass, we ended up with an amazing track. This month with Digging Up Positivity, our special guest is Fabrice from Cowcat Games, uh, also known from Brock the Investigator. I would like to welcome you on the show, Fabrice. Uh, so, hello, uh, yes. I'm a French mm -hmm. indie developer, 40 year old. So yeah, as you mentioned, I, I made uh, Brock the Investigator. Uh, I've been making games uh, since I was uh, eight year old. My brother bought an uh, Amstrad CPC, an 8-bit computer. And uh, I started ma making games on it uh, in basic. And uh, that's uh, how uh, I was uh, already uh, learning uh, programming. M my very first game was uh, something I, I called Animal Battle, which had, uh, which was random. I, I displayed uh, animals and uh, one would win. And, and the funny part is that uh, it kind of looked like the Pokemon uh, battle, even though uh, that was uh, years before uh, Pokemon. <laughs> oh, that, that is uh, really awesome. Um, <laughs> no, it was really simple, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. little me was already thinking that. So I played a lot of games uh, in my life. So I had the Master System, the Mega Drive, the PlayStation One, uh, uh, the, the consoles that I played the most on. And I had mm -hmm. a PC afterwise. What inspired you to work in video games? I, I didn't like my day job anymore. Uh, so 10 years ago, uh, I decided to, to leave it and uh, start uh, to be uh, an indie developer professionally. I, I was very disappointed by the game industry uh, back then, because uh, especially during the, the Xbox 360 uh, era, I felt uh, kind of disconnected uh, from uh, the big games uh, that uh, everyone uh, hyped, uh, which were all uh, grey, realistic looking games. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's when uh, there were uh, some uh, some indies like uh, Bread, Cave Story, and uh, that was a revelation to me that uh, you can make games and release them uh, yourself. You can self-publish. And that's something uh, that, that was allowed by uh, digital downloads. That's what inspired me uh, to, to become an indie myself. I, I love intros in games. Uh, have you noticed something that uh, uh, the big uh, AAA games, uh, they still make some, some games with intros, but 
they aren't new IPs, they're all uh, very, very old. Uh, if you take a Ratchet and Clank or Sonic, they're all uh, 20, 30 old IPs. So, yeah. The one reason I, I'm making uh, games myself is because uh, I wanted to make uh, to make the, the games I want to play my, myself. To be creative because uh, I feel uh, this industry was really lacking. <laughs> We, we talked about uh, digital downloads and uh, a lot of people say uh, they only swear by physicals but uh, for indies uh, this is what allows, uh, allows us to, to, to thrive. By the way, uh, Brock has an upcoming physical uh, uh, through uh, Red Art Games. Oh cool! So it's gonna release uh, anytime soon. Uh, it's very complicated to, to do physicals. In the 90s, every other month there was a new franchise starring an entry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, especially in mascot platformers. But in that case, I do love it. I When I saw that Brock the Investigator was released, it's really a breath of fresh air. And it did attract a lot of attention within the furry fandom. And a lot of the fan base is from the furry fandom. Uh, do you have any uh, fun or memorable interactions with the fan base of Brock? I, I say that fans, they love uh, to make a uh, lot of theories of, about the game. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, sometimes I make fun of, of this because uh, every time I, I post something on Discord, uh, they say, uh, oh, this is this canon now uh, because I, I am the creator of the game, so everything I wrote is canon. Uh, but uh, I think, find that a bit silly, so... For example, uh, in the game, uh, they have seen the, the, the Rue and uh, his wife D. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a daughter, and I posted that her name is. Uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, <laughs> put a uh, garbled uh, mm -hmm. writing uh, with the keyboard, and uh, I said, uh, "Very good, it's canon now." And uh, uh, it's it's fun to have a little playful back and forth with with the fan base, especially when it comes down to theories. It keeps it alive. One thing uh, that uh, I love about the community that is mm -hmm. that um, they send a, a ton of fan art. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, invited this uh, because uh, in the in the game uh, I put uh, the fan art in an extra section, mm -hmm. so everyone is invited to to put uh, drawings uh, to, <sighs> to send me them or to post on social social. So it's a win-win situation where. Uh, I get some visibility and in, at the same time they, they've got uh, their fan art in the game. So mm -hmm. I, I think it, it was a really cool idea that worked really well for the, the promotion of the game. I, I'm actually surprised that I still get uh, fan art of the game uh, two years after release. Uh, that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's great. I actually hired uh, several fans to work on the, the game now. Mm -hmm. For example, Glasses Gator, uh, who helps a lot, uh, was actually a fan uh, at first. Uh, there are several new broad projects in development right now. And uh, we we have uh, some secret chats uh, to, <laughs> about uh, the development uh, of uh, what's coming, so that's pretty fun too. At first, uh, I made uh, most of the game myself. Mm -hmm. My previous game uh, was the same way. I, I made uh, most of the game uh, myself, which is uh, insanity. But... And uh, for Brock, I, uh, progressively, I've uh, I've uh, commissioned the artist uh, uh, to do uh, character animations, to do music, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, the voice acting, of course, but I still do uh, most of the work. Oh, but that is awesome that your fan base is now helping along and that really strengthens the community as well. Yeah. And with this huge track record where you made a name for yourself, I wanted to ask, you inspire a lot of people, but do you have any tips what you would say to someone who wants to make their very first video game? So I would say uh, start simple, of course. Um, and uh, then you can grow uh, from uh, from there. I use uh, Game Maker as engine, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's a very good engine for making 2D games because uh, it's simple enough for beginners and uh, pro uh, more professional uh, users like me uh, uh, 
can also use it uh, for for releasing uh, games. I mentioned that uh, I released the Brock on uh, all platforms uh, possible, uh, which is uh, PC, Mac, uh, Linux, uh, PS4, PS5, Switch, uh, Xbox, uh, and uh, even mobile uh, recently. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's the great thing with GameMaker, uh, you can export uh, on uh, on potentially uh, all these platforms. It makes things easier than uh, doing your own uh, engine. Uh, it's like Unity here and uh, Unreal Engine, of course. Mm -hmm. It's just a bit well, less well known, and, but uh, very simple. Uh, I will disagree with uh, what most indies tend to say. They say uh, you should only make uh, small games, uh, uh, don't make uh, your big project that you have in mind, uh, only release small games one in, in very f few months. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I disagree with this. Uh, for Brock, I spent uh, six years on it. So mm -hmm. it was really ambitious, but on the other hand, that's how uh, I got to stand out. It's a very difficult market now mm -hmm. uh, with so many games releasing. So you you absolutely have to stand out to to have a chance. Of course, there's, there's always exceptions, and uh, sometimes uh, you can have uh, small games. Uh, uh, which uh, get uh, very popular, but you can count on this and uh, you, you need uh, good graphics. Uh, some people say, oh, gameplay is more... Well, but uh, no, actually, uh, most players, uh, they'll decide if they want to play something in the few seconds uh, when they are on the store page. You really need uh, to have an art style that uh, is attractive to, to the audience you want. It took six years to make Brock, but uh, it was successful, uh, at least uh, in, uh, for my company size. <laughs> I often say it's one of the most feature-filled games ever made. Uh, people don't realize this, but... Uh, uh, so it combines a point and click uh, where you can jump, you can fight, mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, clues that you can combine, it's also kind of a visual novel, uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, choices and a summary screen which uh, summarizes all uh, your, your choices and compares it with uh, other players, mm -hmm. there's a cooperation mode, local co-op, uh, that I did after uh, more recently. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, accessibility to blind players, which is uh, something very unique because uh, not uh, a lot of games have this. Uh, you can use a mouse controller, uh, you can switch between them, etc. There's a ton of stuff. It was really, a really ambitious game. It's fully voice acted. There's uh, yes, uh, 23,000 lines of uh, voice acting. Simple beginnings, but don't. Be afraid to expand until something really big. If you have a dream project, uh, you should mm -hmm. make it, in my opinion. But, 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 uh, if you want to make it as a business uh, for a living, uh, make sure you're not the spender type. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll need to have spared as much money as possible. Uh, when you're independent, uh, uh, you, there's always a highs and downs. And uh, you need to, to be able to pay uh, your invoices. Uh, at any point in time, so... Absolutely. And th th that is some very sound advice. So I have announced uh, recently that uh, there will be a DLC mm -hmm. to Brock, which is called the, the Brawl Bar. And uh, in this DLC, it's a, a bit different from the main game because it focuses on uh, action challenges. So uh, you have a ton of cha challenges uh, to, to beat and uh, it will have some story with, with new characters, but uh, main focus are the, the fights and uh, it's uh, pretty fun. It's pretty varied and uh, it's I wanted to give uh, the beat them up aspect of the game. Uh, it's time to shine. Each, each fight is meant to be different from each other. There are 60 plus uh, changes um, planned mm -hmm. and with new enemies uh, which are introduced too. I think it'd be pretty exciting uh, for everyone who loves uh, the game. I would like to thank you very much for your input and very valuable advice for our new uh, game developers in development. <laughs> and um, I would like to thank you for your time and uh, I wish you a, a wonderful time ahead and we'll keep an eye out for uh, Cowcat games and the materials that you release because it looks amazing. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, 
Ah, what a month it has been. And now we are at the outro. First, we're going to check out who won this lovely pride shirt from my artwork tea store. Henry Bear, 2293. Please do use the contact form so we can verify some details. You have until the next episode to claim your wonderful shirt. And because of Pride Month on this side of the pond is still going on in July, I am going to give another one away to a commenter on this video right here. And I will announce the winner in the August episode. And now, for a special thank for my supporters on Subscribestar. We have Manic, we have Cosmic with a K, we have Taros, Hanzana and Score Chaser. And we have our YouTube members, Lorek Bernison uh, 086, Longtooth and a Whiffer. Of course, we have on Patreon, a Tentru McNally, Ishnula and Els Deckers. And last but certainly not least, my Twitch subscribers. A rookie IC Meerkat, a Drika, a Light Nympha, Inimini, a Jake RG, James TGS, a Marcel Copperson, Ari1985, Svex the Mischievous Fox, a Garel Trim, a The Gentle Jester, a Jack is FF, a Drone the Star Bear, Ayabu Yin, Traitron the Dragon, Falco Neo, Hanzana, Nins Nenomon, and a Lady Leon. However, do remember that a like and a subscribe goes very a uh, very long way as well. The next episode of Digging Up Positivity will be on the August the 31st, and I'll see you around. And remember, all the hugs. <laughs>